you go. I hope you're still with me. There is question three from the component one knock 2019. So the very first one is straightforward. Uh, you've got an electron micros uh, micrograph of a chloroplast. You will see in there you have got granite stacks, you've got thylakoid membranes. And all you'd need to do is identify with drawing a label onto where you'd find a photosystem. So photosystems are either on the granite stacks or the thylakoid membrane. So you've got quite a, quite a bit to pick from. You can't point to any of the starch grains or what does no longer look like it's part of the chloroplast, okay? Granite stacks or the thylakoid membranes, that's where you want to point. Then what is actually the pigment in the reaction center? You have to be specific. It has to be chlorophyll A. The other ones are all the accessory pigments, okay? So don't mention chlorophyll P or the carotenoids. They're not part of it in the reaction center. You've got chlorophyll A. Let me just show you that as part of the mark scheme. So the arrow, then the chlorophyll A. Right, next. This one was a bit harder. Explain the role of the photosystems in the light-dependent stage. The so light-dependent stage. What actually is happening in the photosystems? You have a photon of light coming in. It is being changed from a physical light energy to chemical energy, to the flow of electrons. So you've got a change of energy. So it's a transducer. So light is coming in. It excites electrons. It moves those electrons to a higher energy level, level. They then flow through the electron transport chain, do pumping, and what's the ultimate end product of the light dependent stage? You've got ATP made and you've got NADPH made. So you've got those electron um, electrons passed on. Now let's have a look at the mark scheme. Absorb light, photons, act as transducer or something along the lines aligns of the electrons becoming excited and the electrons um, passing on that energy to the reaction center and as a last one that as it's flowing through the electron transport chain it's powering those pumps it is allowing the chemo uh, the chemosmotic gradient to be built up again and again we've got the synthesis of ATP and the reduced NADP or if you call it NADPH as well that's fine okay or simply electrons are passed down the electron transport chain tough question but this is part of it right the next one here is expecting you to in your head have the photosynthesis equation alongside this one here for chemosynthesis what is needed what are the four differences that you could kind of see what is required as um not only chemical reactants or produced as chemical products, but what other conditions are there about. Key differences that you'd need to see. They've got the hydrogen sulfide here, which clearly there isn't in photosynthesis. There's no hydrogen sulfide required. Uh, for photosynthesis, where does water feature? For photosynthesis, water is actually on the other side. It's a um, reactant, whereas here it's product. For both of them, you've got some version of carbohydrate made, so you cannot mention glucose or trioses or any of the sugars for, because for both of them you have got a carbon compound made. Here you could say sulfur is made, photosynthesis there isn't. You could also say, hold on a second, oxygen is required for the chemosynthesis, where in photosynthesis oxygen is produced. Also, and it's kind of unwritten somehow, photosynthesis you need light. Whereas here, you don't need light. So have a look at the mark scheme, what it would allow you to do. Light, no light. Obviously, chloroplasts are no chloroplasts. That would have been a distinction that it allows you to get away with here. Um, the electrons coming from sulfur, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur producer, that link to sulfur. And here, that there's no link to sulfur, that the electrons are coming through the, from the chlorophyll and from the excitement there. Water, sorry, the oxygen and water, where is it being released? Where is it produced? So for chemosynthesis, that oxygen is actually required for the process, whereas in photosynthesis, it's produced. And the same thing, just opposite here for um, water. Okay, moving on to the next one. This one here, it says following the synthesis of a carbohydrate. That means we're still talking about plants. I've had a couple of people mention iron and hemoglobin. Thank you, because that would be linking inorganic uh, elements or, or minerals if you were to think about it. 
not technically an iron, it links the element iron, I-R-O-N, to hemoglobin. So this is still a question about plants. Three different biological molecules and their inorganic ions. You cannot tell me nitrogen, you will have to say nitrate. Nitrate is then a charged ion, that's a basic chemistry difference. If it's got no overall electric charge, it's an atom, um, but it's asking for ions. So nitrates that would be used in protein, you could say DNA or nucleic acids, I could, you could get away with that. Uh, you'd have the phosphates for ATP, for example. Um, you'd have, uh, yeah, phosphates, phospholipids as well. Nitrates and phosphates go for nucleotides. And the magnesium for chlorophyll, which we did go through in teaching that that's one. Chlorosis, you remember that lack of magnesium um, if chlorophyll can't be formed properly. Right, moving on to that herbicide question. The herbicide question, it gives you a very confusing starting point here. So if that messes you up a little bit, then apologies. It's just a, a tricky way on how that is worded. Light energy can no longer be used, okay? How is blocking that electron transport chain leading to the death of the plant ultimately? So if light cannot be used, photosystem um, the photosystems no longer function. If light's not used, that means we don't have a light in deep, sorry, a light dependent stage, which means we will not have ATP, we will not have NADPH, which means that this is now lacking for the light independent stage. Therefore, the trioses and sugars cannot be formed. Because you have got a lack of ATP and NADPH, you've got that lack of uh, trioses, and therefore no energy for respiration for the plants and the whole plant will die. And let's have a look at this because it does include also the, the bleaching effect of it as well, the cell dry now, sorry. So destruction of the chlorophyll means that the photosystem cannot absorb light, means less NADP and ADP for the light independent or for the Calvin cycle, which means you're not gonna get any triosis, glucoses, whatever sugar compounds, which means it's not available for respiration. Therefore, the plant can't respire and make its own ATP in the cell parts where it's required, in the organelles where it's required. And the cell membranes will dry out because with no active transport, your roots don't work at all. So that was something that was mentioned by some of you. Right, that was the last one of question three.